Okay, so this is uh, taking my breath away. Good morning, Community Presbyterian Church, and we are so glad to have some faces here this morning, and we are so glad for all of you joining us at home on this Lord's Day. It is a special day here this November 1st for so many reasons, but we are so happy to see some of you return to us and be with us. But that also means that there are many of you out there, and we're so glad that you're joining us as well. So thank you all. Thank you all. My name is Brian Johnson, and we just have a few announcements before we get into November 1st's worship service. So um, you turned your clocks back, so thank you for doing that. Welcome. All right, um, some things coming up. If you'd like to join us next Sunday, uh, we'd ask that you go to our website so that you can register. Um, do that by 8 o'clock Thursday night, and we'll have a spot for you here so that you can come and worship live. Continue to join us online as well if that's where you feel most safe. But thank you all for being here. That service continues online as well as I'll remind you that we have Bible study. So lots of things to do to be involved with us. We'll have fellowship after church. I think all you have to head home really quick and get on your computers, but we'll be fellowshipping via online uh, when we're done. So hope you can join us uh, for that opportunity. Thanksgiving is coming, uh, and as tradition, we always collect those items for baskets, and this year we're doing the same thing as far as collecting, um, but we're looking for, for gifts of money or gift cards to put in those baskets, and so if that is something that you're able to help us with, we appreciate your generosity, and we'll put those baskets together to deliver to our community. Lots of things coming up for youth. Uh, unfortunately, because of the rain, we don't have youth group tonight, but that does not mean that we won't have things to do. And so next Friday, November 6th, we will have our dinner and movie night on the lawn. So youth, put that on your calendar. Make sure you look for that. There are adults events, so I ask you to look in your, your bulletin at those. But I will point out the one, the Grateful Book Study. Um, we know that we're hearing sermons about gratitude, and so to be grateful, it is a time to do that. So if you're interested in being a part of that, please take a look at your bulletin. This is a small group. It's going to be four weeks uh, here in November. They'll be studying and reading uh, Diana Butler Bass's book, Grateful, The Transformative Power of Giving Thanks. Uh, and so please go to the website, take a look at that, and see if you can be a part of that opportunity. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for coming to worship this day. Uh, so much happening today. We are glad that you're here to worship. So let us worship the Lord our God this Sunday morning. Welcome home. It is so good to have you here this morning. And welcome to those of you that are joining us by live stream. It is so good to be gathered together to worship the Lord our God. Will you please join with me in the call to worship? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In all our weakness and strength, with our youth-filled spirits and aging bodies, we come to be your people, O God. Strong in faith and eager with questions, silently singing and praise and whispering our prayers. We come to be your people, O God, filled with saintly determination, yet mindful of our human limitations. We come to be your people, O God, made strong in your endless love for us. We come to be your people, O God. And we come now to listen to Tim as he plays and sings, and he will sing for us. So let us worship God. We praise you, O God, our Redeemer, Creator, in grateful devotion or tribute we bring. We lay it before you, we kneel and adore you, we bless your holy name, God praises we sing. We worship you, God of our fathers and mothers, through trial and tempest, our God you have been. When perils overtake us, you will not forsake us. 
And with your help, Lord, our struggles we win. With voices united, our praises we offer, and gladly our songs of thanksgiving we praise. With you, Lord, beside us, your strong arm will guide us to you, our great Redeemer, forever be praised. We do praise and adore you, O God. And so, friends, as we approach the throne of grace, let us be mindful of those things that we'd like to let go and to give to God. So let us confess our sin now before God and one another. Let us pray. God of our mothers and fathers in faith, we confess that despite their example, we do not always love you as you would have us love. We do not always do as you would have us do. Have mercy on us and hold us, dear one. Comfort us when we mourn the passing of friends and family and help us to know that they are rejoicing in your presence. We praise you for the grace you shower on us, constantly forgiving our shortcomings, especially the ones that we don't share with anyone but you. Hear now the silent fears and worries of our hearts. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples as he was leaving them, Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. For in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I come and prepare a place for you, a place that is filled with grace and mercy, enough for you and for me and for all who believe. So friends, believe this, the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ, the Son. Give thanks. I invite the children to join me up front if anyone is here and would like to come. Yay! Thanks for coming, sweetie. Good to see you. You've gotten so big. <laughs> Little children, come on to me. Little children, come on to me. You are made in God's image so perfectly. Little children, come on to me. Kylie, right? Kylie? Kylie's here with us. Uh, thanks for coming up, sweetie. <laughs> and um, I wanted to say hello also to all the kiddos. Oh, Kylie, we're not done yet. You want to stay? Come on. Um, and all the kiddos out there on the, on the camera. So, yeah. So, Kylie, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Have a seat. So when you see somebody and you want to say hi, what do you do? You probably talk. When you see someone far away, do you kind of wave sometimes? What if it's someone like you really love and you want to get super close, like, like when your grandma was here? You give her a hug, huh? And in church, sometimes we, we like to shake hands to pass the peace, right? But at this time, because you have a mask, I have a mask, everybody has a mask, we have to be real careful, right? Because we don't want to get anybody sick. So I want to teach you a way that we can pass the peace without touching. Do you know what sign language is? Yeah. So people that can't, can't hear, they use sign language, right? And so this is how you do passing the peace in sign language. So you put your right hand over your left, and then you just kind of move it over like that, and then go like that. Kind of, that means peace. So you do this, peace. And then for Christ, you take your hand, make like a C, like Christ, and you put it here, 
and then here, like it's a kind of a sash. Christ. So let's do that. You do peace of Christ. And then B is you just put both of your thumbs up, hold your fists together, B, and then with you. I'll try that again from the beginning. So peace of Christ be with you. So that's what you do. Now the cool part is when somebody does that to you, if you want to say, and also with you, all you have to do is go like this. Put your pinky and your thumb up and go like this. Also with you. <laughs> that's easier, huh? <laughs> all right, so at home you want to try everybody? So peace of Christ be with you and also with you. So that's how we pass the peace in sign language. So let's have a prayer. Lift up our hands real high, bring them down over our eyes. Close your eyes, open your mouths, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for showing us how to love others, even from a distance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, God. Please join me in, the, um, in reading the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, you call us to come just as we are, and so we do. Speak to us now in your word read and proclaimed, so that we might find the joy and inspiration we seek and become the people you created us to be. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any of scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Speak a word. Speak a word of truth. Speak a word of power. Speak a word of life. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. Amen. Welcome home. It's been 
almost eight months now since I was able to welcome people in the sanctuary. So it's so good to have you here. And welcome to all the, those of you that are at home still. It's probably good for you to see people here in the sanctuary uh, and knowing that they're holding your place for when you feel safe enough to come back on your own time. So we come into the sanctuary, whether in person or online, because this is a sacred space. This is a refuge, a place where we come to get a glimpse of God, a place where we come to hear some good news so that we can forget about the bad news in the world, if even just for an hour, <laughs> to drown out the steady drumbeat of debate and division and disease and despair and death. We come into this sanctuary longing to hear a word, a life-giving word that can lift our spirits and soothe our souls. And yet, what do we hear from Scripture? A reading from the book of Revelation. <laughs> the word revelation is from the Greek word apocalypse. An apocalypse means a universal disaster, the complete and final destruction of the world. And as we look at our world today, marked by pandemic and protests and political polarization, along with fires and floods and fierce hurricanes, people might be rightly wondering, is this the end of the world as we know it? Is this the end of the world as we know it? <laughs> well, in Revelation, we read about the end of the world, the end of times. And it starts and goes through chapter 6, where it's talking about creatures with lots of different eyes and people that ride horses that are named Hades and death. And there's an earthquake that shakes the earth. And then in chapter 8 again, it goes on and talks about lightning and thunder and fire that rains down on the earth. Scary stuff. Confusing symbols, which is why, quite honestly, I don't spend a lot of time in Revelation. But today, the lectionary reading, the assigned reading for this day, is from Revelation. And so, here we are. But you see, the word apocalypse also means something else. It means to uncover or unveil, to disclose or to reveal something. And in this case, it's a prophetic revelation that good will ultimately triumph over all evil. And so, here we are between chapter 6 and 8 with all of this death and destruction. Our reading comes from chapter 7. Here in the middle is what we might call an interlude of sanctuary a safe place where we can read and learn and know what is God saying to us this day. And here in chapter 7, we read about the Almighty God on the throne of judgment. And there is a great multitude of people all around, and they are from every place in the world, different languages, different tongues, different ethnicities, different traditions. They are all gathered there together. And they are dressed in white robes. And they are praising God, saying blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. Who are these people in these white robes anyway, you might wonder? Well, Scripture tells us that they are not perfect people, as we might originally imagine when we think of saints. But no, they are people that have gone through the great ordeal and have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. What does that mean? It means people who on earth 
struggled. They faced trials and tribulations, but they trusted in God. They are people, ordinary people, that sinned and strayed from the right path. But they confessed to Jesus and asked him to save them. And Jesus does. Here in Revelation, we find the Lamb of God, Jesus, standing before the throne so that when God looks out at the people, God doesn't see sin. God sees Jesus, the Savior of the world, the one who died to save us from our sins. And so that's what God sees is full of grace and truth. So here in Revelation, my friends, we get a glimpse of all the saints, the people who kept the faith on earth, even when it was hard and humbling, even when it was not popular or profitable, in ordinary times and even in extraordinary times, like the times we're living through now, they kept the faith. And so we get a glimpse of their reward, their eternal reward in the heavenly sanctuary. And so these words are comforting words of life for us to lift our hearts and to soothe our spirits. And here on this day of all saints, we read this revelation text and it reminds us it reminds us of our loved ones who have died, who we trust are now with a great multitude of all the saints in heaven around God's throne, worshiping and singing glory and praise be to God forever and ever. And so after this, we will hear the, the treasured hymn for all the saints. And we will speak the words they in glory shine. We on earth, we feebly struggle. Because we do. They are in heaven, and we are left behind here on earth to struggle. We struggle with the finality of death, don't we? We struggle because it seems as if the picture that we have of them is fading from our eyes. I've heard some of you say to me, what I wouldn't give for just one more day with my mother, <laughs> or just one more conversation with my father, or just one more smile from my spouse. Now, I haven't had many people say to me that they actually can hear their loved ones talking to them from heaven, but I know that they have had reminders. They've had glimpses of things here on earth that remind them of their loved ones. After Tom Jackson died, his wife Janet opened up his Bible that he read from every day. And there he had written all of these words, special scripture verses and prayers that he had prayed in this church, things that were important to his faith. And so this Bible reminds, reminds us of him. Margot Forsyth was quite a gardener. And so now as neighbors and family drive past her yard, the flowers are still in bloom. And they remind them of her. Herb McGlucky's favorite color was yellow because it's bright and cheerful and joyful, just like Herb was. So his family members all wore yellow to the funeral service at the graveside. And whenever they see that color, it reminds them of him. Daryl Johnson loved to tell about her faith in God. And even though she went through hard times, she loved Jesus. And she loved to come to this church and sit in that pew where her family's sitting now. And so her faith and this place reminds us of her. 
Ross Dillon sat in that choir loft for years, singing, making beautiful music to glorify God. And so as the music plays on, it reminds us of him. You see, Revelation reminds us of the promises of our faith, that the saints in heaven continue to give us glimpses of what it will be like someday and how we can endure the time in which we live today. At the end of our scripture text, I think the saints are speaking to us. They left a message for us that I think we need to hear. They remind us, saying, the one who is on the throne will shelter you. This word shelter means tabernacle or travel with. And just, it's the same word that's used when God travels with the Israelites all through the wilderness and leads them to the promised land. So I think what it's saying is that God will be with us, not just with us, but over us, sheltering us, protecting us from all that we have to endure. The saints also remind us that the Lamb of God is also the shepherd, the one who leads them to springs of water and nourishes them. So I think this reminds us that Jesus is our good shepherd, and he leads us through the darkest valleys, yes, and also to streams of living water where we can renew our soul. And finally, the saints remind us that God will wipe every tear from our eyes. What a tender description. Reminds me of a parent, a loving parent, who gets down on their knees and wraps the child in their arms and wipes away their tears. And so that is what God does for us, especially these days. So here I think this passage in Revelation shows us that God is a God in heaven, yes, but also here on earth. A God who will be there in the end of times, yes, but also a God who is here for the times in which we live, sheltering us, shepherding us, and soothing us. It's a description of a God for the saints in heaven, yes, but also for the saints and the sinners here on earth. It's a God for them and also for all of us. So as we long for a safe place to be these days, a sanctuary, a refuge, a place we can call home, so too does God long for a place to be, for people to shepherd, and for pain to soothe. God longs for a place to call home. So I wonder, are there any hurting hearts out there longing for relief? Are there any sagging spirits out there longing for renewal? Are there any weary ones out there carrying heavy burdens and longing for rest? Come home. Come home to God who wants to make his home in you. Let us pray. Wherever we are in the wilderness times, O oh God, May we know, may we trust that we are always in the sanctuary of your steadfast love. Amen.
join me in the reading of For All the Saints, uh, 326, and Tim will be singing the refrain for us. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou wast their rock, their fortress and their might, thou, Lord, their captain, in the well-fought fight, thou, in the darkness, drear their one true light. Alleluia, alleluia. O blessed communion, fellowship divine we feebly struggle they in glory shine yet all are one in thee for all are thine Alleluia. When the strife is fierce, the warfare long steals on the ear the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again, and arms are strong. Alleluia. wide bounds from ocean's farthest coast through gates of pearl streams in the countless host singing to Father Son and Holy Ghost Alleluia. Miller, if you could bring me the lighter. So friends, this is All Saints Day as well as the first Sunday of the month, so we'll be having communion. And hopefully when you came in, you got your communion in the, in the baggie. Um, and when we get to that point, you can take it out. Thanks, Tim. And, uh, and uh, lift up your mask and have the bread, and then you turn it over and open it up, and you can have the juice. Um, so we'll all be able to have communion together today. I'll also be speaking the names of each person who died this past year from our congregation and lighting a candle. And then we also have the white roses to remind us of them. So for any of the families who are here, when, when the service is over, if you'd like to take one of the white roses, um, I'd be really happy for you to have that in memory of your loved one. So let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, we rejoice to be back in this holy place of sanctuary on this holy day of all saints to worship and glorify your holy name. Since we were here last March, much has happened that is not holy. We've experienced grief and loss of what we used to call normal times. As we count the number of dead to COVID-19 in the hundreds of thousands in this country and over a million in the world. We've experienced a reckoning of systems toward justice and the resistant awareness of privilege and the impact of struggle on people trying to hold it all together. 
We've experienced political divisions that reveal the mean-spirited nature of neighbors and ourselves. We've experienced much pain and suffering that continue to hold our hearts captive. But perhaps more than any other time, this year has called us to cling fast to our faith with persistence and patience and perspective and prayer. And so we do. We lift our eyes to the heavens and we pray, O oh Lord our God, we thank you for the many people throughout the ages who have followed your way of life joyfully, for the many saints and martyrs, ordinary and extraordinary men and women who have offered up their very lives so that your life abundant may become manifest. For your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise you. O Lord, we thank you for those who chose the way of Jesus Christ. In the midst of trial, they held out hope. In the midst of hatred, they kindled love. In the midst of persecutions, they witnessed to your power. In the midst of despair, they clung to your promise. For your love and kindness, we will at all times praise you. In this time, on this day, we praise and thank you for the people of our church family that we knew and loved so well, who once blessed our lives here on earth and now live eternally with you. Dorothy went. Henry Herkenrother. Trudy File. Robert Lyons. Thomas Jackson, Jr. Ross Dillon. Susan Edwards. Daryl Johnson. Sarah Snively. David Henderson. Margo Forsyth. Douglas Evans. Herbert McGlucky. John Warren. And for all of those people who have died from COVID-19. Lord, as we look at these lights, we thank you for the truth that they passed on to us. That is by giving that we receive. It is by becoming weak that we shall be strong. It is by loving others that we shall be loved. It is by showing mercy to others that we receive mercy. It is in standing up for what is right, no matter the cost that your kingdom comes on earth as in heaven. It is by dying that we shall inherit life everlasting. 
O Lord, give us courage to follow their way of life. For your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise you. O Lord, we thank you for your love and faithfulness that revealed itself fully in Jesus, who lived and died and rose again for us and for our salvation. He taught us and touched us. He healed us and helped us. He blessed us. And so now bless this bread and this cup by the power of your Holy Spirit so that they might be holy food and holy drink, that we might get a glimpse of your heavenly banquet, that we might be gathered together with all the saints in heaven. Help us to be numbered among your good and faithful servants all the days of our lives and even forevermore. We pray this prayer in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who defeated death and opened the gates to heaven so that all may go in. And he taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night before Jesus died, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin so drink from it all of you all of you in remembrance of me for whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again So friends, this is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all those who trust in him to join us together with our communion. So as I said, feel free to take out your empty, open your baggie, and you take off one side, and it's the bread, and the other side, and it's the, the juice. bread of life and the cup of salvation for you. Don't run, please. I'll be talking about generosity this morning. Generosity as it relates to church giving. And, and deep-seated values are, they're really tough to talk about. And it reminds me of how many of you have volunteered um, to offer your statements of faith for next week? That's yeah. I'm I'm with you on that. Uh, it, this is tough stuff. Um, we dig deep on on faith and 
and racial justice and on generosity. Um, many times, gratitude is, is an easier topic. Um, what are the things that we're thankful for? And many of us have a, a list that's already ready of, the, of those things that we're thankful for, but we don't always translate that into, into generosity. Um, are we able to say that we're most generous to those things that we're most thankful for? Now, I'm thankful for my wife, Janet, um, whose solid, clear faith in God is, is such a model for me and something to aspire to. I'm thankful for our family, and especially in these troubled, disorienting times. I'm, I'm just thankful for the blessings of shelter and, and food. Um, I'm also thankful that Janet and I landed in the right spot, right here in this church. Um, the building and, and the, the preaching and the people and the caring, we, we have found our spiritual home. Um, I'm thankful for a newfound interest in Bible study, something I've never done before, and, and the camaraderie that exists there with, with that group of folks. And I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to join so many loving people in exploring, really digging into uh, to white privilege. And I'm thankful for the struggle of carrying out the Matthew 25 mandate. And I'm especially thankful, grateful, for technology and the many extra bright, creative people who we know who produce a live stream every week and who have carried us through since March. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, folks. Um, hopefully, some of you um, received the, uh, the generosity campaign letter and, and the brochure in the mail. Uh, you might have received it yesterday. And if you didn't, uh, it's on the way. Um, please read the letter. It was carefully and prayerfully uh, written. And it's an appeal uh, for your generosity. Every one of us has a role to play at Community Church, giving of your time and talents and giving generously of your bounty. Um, please pay special attention to a new feature this year for 21. Um, when you increase your giving over last year, your increase will be matched dollar for dollar. And those matching dollars come from bequests and memorial gifts from church members who have passed away recently. We ask that you show your gratitude for their generosity by increasing your gift for 2021. You know, when these folks passed, their, their giving was lost. And as a result, our congregational giving will be about $30,000 behind our numbers for 2020. The, the matching incentive is, is aimed at encouraging all of us to increase our giving. Um, when we give, we support this beautiful facility. We, we support our local mission partners, our vibrant staff. We're able to grow our youth activities and, and do things like Kids Jam. And we grow our relationship with Triumph Church. And we continue to bring Christ to our community and our community to Christ. So. I hope that when we talk about this church, we're able to say, where there is gratitude, there is generosity. What are you thankful for? Thanks. So as we as we move forward to dedicating our, our gifts and our, our pledges. 
come before God with gifts and offerings that reflect your joy and gratitude for God's grace and goodness. Come before God with praise and worship, joining with all the saints as we present to God with gladness a portion of all that God has entrusted us to steward. And, and please join me in the, uh, the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, in this holy place we have come and you have prepared a table for us and fed us and blessed us. In this holy time, we have given you offerings of our thanksgiving and treasures. Let your Holy Spirit come upon these gifts and bless them so that they might bless others with your eternal love. We pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ's communion bread, in Christ's communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share, each proud division ends. The love that made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. The Spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such friendship better known, alive among us here, alive among us here. Together met, together bound, by all that God has done, we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one, the love that makes us one. So friends, will you please join with me in the closing benediction? Go in gratitude for all that God has done, from creation to the cross to celebration, to the saints who have lived among us. We go out to be God's people. Go in strength to be the saints of God. Go from this place, to the workplace, to the home place, to the marketplace, to every place, living as God's own people. We go out to be God's people. So as you go out to be God's people, know that God goes with you, sheltering, shepherding, and soothing you every step of the way. So may God bless you and keep you. May God be kind and gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace now and always. So let us share a sign of peace. So peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
Thanks again so much for coming and uh, welcome you to leave as you came the same way out. Um, and I'll be here with the flowers. I'd be happy to give a, a rose to the families of, of the saints. So be well this week and hope to see you again next week. God bless.